You've come to the right place to make a fighting game. We win. Hello friends, in this part we will learn how to create the assets needed for your game. 2D or 3D or 3D acting like 2D, this is a really hard question. In order to create your game, you need to have or create assets, that is all the 3D and 2D data that will be in the game. By assets we mean 3D characters, weapons, environments, world design, textures, materials and many more things like that. First, let's look at the fundamental problem with 2D games. In order to create 2D fighting games like Street Fighter 2 and Mortal Kombat, you need to have a lot of assets. Every move of your character has to be animated, drawing each frame separately. On average, an animated game consists of anywhere from 5 to 30 plus frames, depending on the character and the content. Now multiply the current states, idle, walk, run, jump, crouch, hit, guard, knockback, etc. by the number of characters. Even if you only think of 5 frames for each, that's still a huge task. You can get an idea by taking a look at Ryu's sprite sheet from Super Street Fighter 2. So, having a team of talented artists can make things even easier. You can find more sprite sheets by clicking the links in the video description. Of course, not having a dedicated team of artists doesn't mean you can't make a fighting game. You can definitely see one-man projects with completely custom assets and characters around you. However, your fighting game may take longer than you expected to finish. Still, it's nice to have some great examples of what a can-do attitude can achieve. <laughs> So is 3D really easier? Yes, in short, 3D fighting games like Tekken, Virtua Fighter or Dead or Alive are at least in principle less problematic for a small development team. For starters, the assets are a bit less problematic and the animations aren't that complicated because you don't have to redraw anything, you just play with the character's movement mechanics until you get it perfect. Best of all, you can reuse some animations for multiple characters without having to redo them all over again. That said, we can definitely understand why Arc System Works and Capcom have switched from sprite-based fighters to 3D models in their latest fighting game releases. So, where does the problem come in with 3D fighting games? Have you ever watched Terminator? I mean the first one. In the final moments of the movie, we see Arnold's metallic skeleton. Raise your hands if you feel like he's moving unnaturally, if you're a little uncomfortable with the strange movement pattern. This is where you can see the effects of the slide into the uncanny valley. This is something you should avoid at all costs. Animations play a really important role in your game. So, even if the issues with assets are a little less complicated, it is still worth mentioning that you should not underestimate it. Another problem is that players expect more fluidity from a 3D fighting game than a 2D game. A 2D game is considered a break from reality, so if your character jumps backwards without changing frames, your players probably won't complain. However, in a 3D fighting game, you will need more pipeline flow in terms of system requirements, game mechanics and many other things. In conclusion, you have to choose between drawing every character frame or smoothly animating 3D models. I hope this video was helpful to you. See you in our next series about making a fighting game.